Happy Christmas and welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry that it's been so long since the last video. I think it's been close to two months now. So I'm just bringing you back to the rebuild of our Caterpillar 206B FT. Uh, now, in this video, we're going to cover the last of the pump assembly. I have been working on this about a month and a half ago and ran into some difficulties. Then work got incredibly busy. So I uh, wasn't able to get to the pump for some time. I brought it to work and eventually I had to ask for help from a friend of mine at work. So I'm going to take you through that. Um, I didn't get all of that in video because I was working in somebody else's workshop, but um, I'll take you through the basics on it. Also, I'm going to bring you some footage of the um, some other work we've done in the machine, uh, mainly pulling the diesel tank and cleaning that. Uh, it's now the 26th of December. I'm hoping to bring this video to you today after some editing. And um, then tomorrow, the 27th, hopefully uh, I'll get the pump bolted back in the machine and we can get her filled up with oil and see can we fire her up hopefully before new year's eve confirm that the thing works so you shouldn't have as long to wait next time for the next video huge thanks to those of you who have subscribed to the channel so far who've watched the videos who've hit the like button and to everybody who's made a comment i uh, really appreciate it it makes all the effort worthwhile so please if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel leave me a comment below uh hit the like button um, really helps. So without further delay we'll take you through the process of rebuilding the pump and uh, then we'll have a look at the flushing of the diesel tank. Uh, now that was filmed about I think mid-October but just haven't got around, didn't have enough to do a full video on it so I've held off until I had the pump together. I was hoping to get down there and get the hydraulic tank cleaned as well but unfortunately due to the workload of the day job I just couldn't get to it so that's something we're going to do in the next few days, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to get cracking. Um, just going to give one final clean to the inside of the body and um, just catch. Any little bit of debris, there's still a few little bits of metal foilings in here. And uh, then we're going to drop in the carrier for the swash plate. Just going to give that a quick clean. Small little bit of carburetor cleaner. Give it a rub. Okay. So, uh, next thing we're going to do with this is um, give it just a small amount of oil. So, I'm just going to get some. Okay, so next thing to sit in place will be uh destroy shaft. So again, just gonna oil the bear in lightly, drop it into position. Um, so I'm gonna get a container now to oil it over so that we're not covering the whole bench now. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's third oiling of the bearing. <laughs> Set that in there. All right. So next part is our swash plate. We need to build up, so we need to attach um, the different servo pistons to this plate before we drop it in. And um, I've also got the 
diagram of the pump here, which I'm going to run through and just make sure that um, I've got every part in the right place. So, so you can see from here we have the swash plate, uh, we have small servo piston, large servo piston, and we have this other rod then as well, which um, I have here in the parts pile somewhere. So we get these all bolted up to the um, smash plate. So I'm just going to offer up the uh, head for a second, see how it sits on here. Make sure I'm in the right orientation. Um, So that seems to be that. Um, let's get the layer over the correct way. So this is the value of um, taking photographs as you go. I taken this photo of the swash plate before it was machined, so it does identify marks on top, and mark the positions where the different pistons were and where the um, damage was. So now I'm able to use it to reassemble everything correctly. So always wise to do that when you're doing a job like this. There it is again. So we had the big gouge, which we can see here filled in, and we had pistons uh, on those sides. If we look at our diagram, we got the pistons in those positions. So I'm just going to do one final check on all my photos, and um, we we'll drop this in the base of the pump and carry on with the assembly. Okay, so, uh, so that's a few bits in. I know I said I was going to assemble the pump um, kind of backwards, doing it on the block, but I think from the point of view of lining up and things, it's better to do it this way, and I'm just going to have to pull the pistons into line with the, the back as I drop it on. Then um, I know when I've seen it done, I've seen one video of one that was done, and it was done in the reverse, but... Um, I'm going to try doing it this way, I think it'll just be a little bit easier. So, clean the pistons, oil them, and fit them in the bores. So pretty much all these parts came with protective coating on them. I need to make sure I remove as much as possible, especially after part that sits inside the bore. And from any of the oil galleries. So that's the first piston. We did that. It's an hydraulic oil. And slot it in.
these and I've forgotten to put the container plate in there so I have to take them on out again. Um, just gonna check now to make sure in case where these need to come out. We need our new container plate, which is here. This quick shot. And we also need to put in the three magic pins plus ball guide so that's clever uh, we've done things in the order I should be this morning okay So at this point it all started to go wrong. Every time I tried to put the assembly together, three pins that hold the ball guiding position fell out. Uh, they in turn hold the um, retainer plate and the pistons against the swash plate. So what I figured out after a while was that you have to assemble everything on the shaft and then drop that into the pump. So the front bearing was fitted at the time, which made this kind of awkward. Uh, it would have been a lot easier had the rear bearing been in position could have dropped on the cylinder block, then the three little pins, then the um, ball guide, the retainer plate and the pistons. But I had it the other way around. So I eventually got it in there, got it into the um, casing. At that point I was pretty frustrated. Went to put the rear bearing on and never supported the front of the shaft. With a result that I managed to push the front bearing out of position. Now I didn't have a pullers that would pull that back out so I took it to work with me, uh, enlisted the help of a friend on at work to um, help me get the assembly apart and then help me to put the pump together. It always worked to have you set a second set of eyes especially if you're just beating your head off a brick wall and you're sick of dealing with something. So um, two of us got it into his workshop and put it together. I've only got a few small shots of that but um, I'll show you these now. So the main pump is uh, finally assembled. Just need to cut on the uh, control block on the side here. So next thing to do here is to drop on the centre pump. We get that bolt in position, get the drive down in there and um, then bolt pump number three to the back of it. And uh, just get that control block on and should be good to go. So I'm working now on the floored workshop on the pallet. It's just easier point of view getting it out of here. It's starting to get heavy. So, got a bit of oil down there into the gears. So, just uh, refit the cover on the back of this pump. Figure out which way it goes on. Should be this way. And straight and bolt that in. Then uh, drop in 
drive in there for the next section do the same with the next fill it with a bit of oil drop it on there and bolt it up She just gonna um, fill with oil afterwards, just to uh, prime it that way. Final piece of the jigsaw is the <coughs> little control block that bolts in here. So you can see uh, that's one of the servo pistons that's attached to it so that moves up and down inside the head of the pump. Uh, there's a little rod that we need to put in there and then we need to unwrap this assembly and bolt it on. So I'll just get that rod. So in here, it's this little part, this has got the um, the famous Lindy rivet in it, this tiny little rivet that um, cost me, I think, about five euros to buy and about 15 to ship here. Um, so there is the rivet right in there. So I had to rivet that little piece onto the top and that can move slightly. Isn't fully all the way in, and this is now slide in here. Right, give it maybe a little bit of lubrication. It's not in place. So now unwrap this assembly. Bolt it in position. So, as the um, servo piston moves in and out, as the swash blade moves, it, that little piece in the back operates this slider inside here and um, does a little, a little bit of magic. So, drop that in there. So that's the um, it's assembly pretty much complete. I just need to put on the uh, dry bracket, and um, I'm just going to grab some chain wrap and just protect all these um, all these exposed outlets.
So that's it. Uh, that's the budget rebuild of our Lindy HPR 100 complete. Um, just going to wrap her up now uh, just to um, make sure nothing gets into the oil ports and things. And she'll have to sit here now for a couple of days and then we'll bolt her back in the machine. Okay, so we're going to make a start here by unbolting this diesel tank. Uh, we're just going to let the catwalk come with it. And uh, we get her over there and get her power washed. So it's just one, two, I think, three, four bolts. A um, bit of plumbing and um, there's some electrics to come off. I think this plate will have to come out as well, just to give us access. Um, I'll show you up top. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so catwalk is going to have to come off with it. That's not a big deal. Fuel pipes are down in there. They're already disconnected at the engine end, so they can just um, come out with it. So we get cracking. So that's um, three out of the four bolts out. There's some kind of little rubber sheet here that covers the last one. Um, the bolts and it just don't want to undo, so I'm just going to try and tap it out of the way. If not, I'll just cut it uh, or drill it and go up through it. So um, don't have time to mess with this, and I just want to get this tank off. Okay. Tank. It's free. Uh, so it's free from the machine. All I have to do now is go up, um, disconnect the wording for the sender, make sure that the fuel parts aren't going to get caught in anything, and uh, tie the catwalk somewhere rather than take it off. And then we can get a um, strap on this thing lifted off the loader. Alrighty, um, just gonna have a look down here. Fluid bottle is oh yeah, I'm just right over that bracket. That's out of the way. Um, we've got oh yeah, fuel gauge is already disconnected, and a few lines it should be free to move. Um, I'd be safer if I just and bolt them and sit you from the two fuel tats. Um, and go about it that way. I'm sure if that's a second fuel tap. Yeah, I get a spanner and unbolt these lines um, uh, rather than restraining them. Right, get this off. And I'm just going to tie. I think I can tie this catwalk, this temporary wire into the cab and get that and throw it out of the way. And um, we'll tie up the. Make sure it's tying up this catwalk 
rather than unbolt yet. Yeah, it's probably easier. I'll just leave it attached to it. Right. Get going. <coughs> about this boiler suit I think I might have bought it a size too small I can barely move sometimes when I'm wearing it <laughs> okay first fuel line off from the spanner I dropped and get the second one off um, give us a good opportunity as well to clean all the years of um, wood chip that are gathered in this machine out. Um, just clean it up a bit. And maybe slow down the rust of it. We're not holding water. Okay, a few lines off. Um, I think things should be pretty much free now. Or extractor switch out of the way. Give it a shot. Yeah. Steps are actually going to have to come off as well because one of the brackets is off the diesel tank. What I'll do with this because access is so bad is I will grab a loader and we'll get a strap in the tank. We'll try lifting it and um, if I can get it up in small, but I can either maneuver the steps to get it out or um, it might give me enough to get my hand in there and just undo that last bolt. I think either way, anyway, we'll get it off. So um, I grab the loader, we'll get a couple of things and we'll get moving. Get this thing to the steam cleaner. that I'm going to throw a little bit of diesel in it and we'll give it another rock um, and put it over the tank 
and just make sure the last is good, stuff has gone out of it. Okay, so uh, we have got our tank back in position and bolted down. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, connect up the fuel lines. Uh, there's at least one of them still under the machine, so what we do is we run a bit of fuel out through the system and um, make sure we've got good flow, and then we can um, plumb it back up to the engine. Okay, so I've got my um, very professional looking rig here. I'm going to take a look inside this tank. Um, I'm going to drop the LED light and the um, action camera in there. Let's see if we can see anything. Okay, so we got diesel flushed out of the return. So we can connect that back up. And we can get all this temporary plumbing out of here. So sort of return by the side. Take all this out. Let's pull some turn on the valves. And put a little fuel through the system. And that is it. That is our fuel system. Back to its factory setting again. Um, just that one Jubilee clip to put on, and there is a retainer clip I need to put in here the next day just to hold the fuel lines. But uh, other than that, she's done. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and thanks to all of you who have watched the last couple of videos and especially to those of you who have taken the time to like the videos, comment and subscribe. It really means a lot. Uh, it's very encouraging. I'm going to take a break for a couple of days. Uh, we'll be back with the cat hopefully by the 27th of December uh, where we'll start to pull the pump back on there so I should be able to bring you another video hopefully for the new year. And with any look, it should be up and running by then. So, cheers, have a nice Christmas, catch you soon.